Hi, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Here it is. Monday. Okay. And uh, by the way, Paula is not going to be here today because she's having a uh, eye thing. She's having a, what do you call it? Oh, let me get that straight. Okay. Uh, she's having a, uh, what do you call it? Cataract surgery. Which oh, happens to all of us. You get old enough, you're going to get cataract surgery. Okay. So that's the way it goes. Okay, so let's uh, let's admit who we got here so far today. Uh, there are six people in the waiting room, it says here. So that's enough for a good little show. We got Marjorie Miller. She happens to be my wife, at least my current wife. Uh, <laughs> and uh, here is uh, uh, Charlene Solis, who will probably be my future wife. Uh <laughs> My lifelong dream, Alex. Yeah, uh, <laughs> of course. It's Mike Chisholm up in Canada, a eh? and uh, Len Lafrisco out there in California. Andrew Deutsch, where are you again? You're somewhere in the Midwest. I'm I'm back in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, Brian Neary is coming on here. Um, who knows where he is? He may be at home. He may be at work. Uh, he may be in his car. That's always a possibility, too. He may actually, be crying actually, after the Eagles lost yesterday. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hello to everyone. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Amy's not here yet today. I hope she's okay. Okay. Paula won't be here today. Huh? I know Paula. Paula. I know. I said because she's having cataract surgery. My wife had that done. Boy, she, that really changed her life. It really is something else. What do you mean? I, got two I have two cataracts. Yeah. I've had two. I've had two. Do, you have a, do you have a Lincoln, too? No. <laughs> yeah, cataract, yeah. I got, yeah. At the risk of making myself sound even uh, more daft than I actually am, could someone please explain to me cataracts? It's a... Uh, it's like, a cloud, it's a, cloud, it's like a cloud in your eye. Cloudy it's the lens of your eye. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say, I, was, I saved him for last, and then I didn't invite him. I didn't forgot to say hello to Edward Berger. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, right. It's, it's all right. You know, you know I don't expect uh, to somebody... Okay, let's explain cataract surgery. All right. They remove the lens and they put in an artificial lens of some sort. And... Exactly. It's exactly what they do. Yeah, yeah, it's better than the original lens God gave you. Yeah, she can see so much better now. It's amazing. Well, you get this like some a lot of times. Dot. There we go. <laughs> dot, in the middle of your, <laughs> dot in the middle of your face. Uh, yeah. Your vision, and uh, it's uh, it's a cataract. So they go in, they remove the old lens and put in a new lens. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't Fifteen I'm in the, doc the doctor's chair. They don't yeah. even pick you out. 15 no. minutes. No. Yeah. And, they, and, they, and the only thing they do is they deaden your eyeball, but they do it with drops. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel a thing. They, they're they in there cutting out a, uh, you know, the one iris or whatever it is and putting in the new one. And uh, we a couple, a couple of weeks later, your vision is just wonderful. I mean, my vision has diminished now over the years since that, but it has diminished only in you know, that I need to put my glasses on for a lot of stuff. But for a while there, I didn't need to put the glasses on. It corrected that, too. So, What if you sneeze it during surgery? Distance, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What if you sneeze during surgery? Wait a minute. Sam, what, what if you sneeze during surgery? <laughs> if you sneeze during surgery, well, it's, uh, you know. You don't. You, yeah, you don't. <laughs> then it becomes a new surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm usually fidgety with most most things. Like the guy who did my 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 uh, lids here, um, uh, so that I could have full vision in those eyes. Uh, he was complaining that I was just too fidgety. He didn't know if he could if he did a perfect job or not, but it turned out he did. But that I was fidgety, but I was never fidgety during that. That's, you know. The only thing that's weird is you're lying there and he's putting, he's taking out the lens and all of a sudden your eye goes blank. And then they put the thing in 
and you're seeing perfectly. What do you mean? What are you giving me that look for there? Did they, you did they sedate you at all when they did it? What? Did they give you any sedation when they did it? No, you don't need it. They sedate the eye. Yeah, the eye. There's no. There's no pain in the eyes. Well, what they do is they put this stuff in there that deadens your eye, and so they could they could poke your eye out and then you wouldn't feel it. You know. I wear glasses for distance. And the cataract uh, replacement gives you 20-20 vision. I didn't have to wear the glasses. I just need them for reading. And that's a whole, that has nothing to do with cataract. I wonder why this program doesn't appeal to young people. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. I'm learning a lot. Uh, does it get rid of the floaties that come that, that are there? No. The, the, the no. floaties oh. are a different thing altogether. Okay. That, yeah. That's just floaties. It's, it's floaters. I have them. Yeah. All right. It's Mandy. She's here. She's here. Oh, there's Mandy. Hello. We can't do our show without our Darla. <laughs> Gosh, you know school today. Anyway. Uh, uh, let me see here. What do we, uh, is there anything to talk about? You know. Um. Of course, there's that person. I was going to talk about, but now I can't remember. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, how many here have memory issues now? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. And Marjorie has real memory issues lately. Hey. Yeah, yeah, no, really. I mean, she has asked me Alex at least tw 20 times in the last week, when the crown's going back on, because you know, they did it in... Alex, <laughs> does that, did that last does episode? That mean, does does right that mean I have two minutes left, <laughs> Marjorie. Okay, I'll just talk to Marjorie. Marjorie, did that last episode not just rip your absolute heart out? Which last episode of, of the crown? The crown, oh, been so, such a while since we've seen it. Yeah, well, no, it, it, didn't, it didn't rip my heart out because I've been through it before. But oh, for real! Those yeah. boys walking behind the, the the funeral procession. Oh my gosh, we just. I remember yeah. when it really happened. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Do you think they should have had them do that, or was that for show? No, it's custom. Is it yeah, custom. I mean, can't you take into consideration the age of the children and, you know, how they're going to be affected by it, you know, and things like that? Boy, here comes Charlie. And Vernon Nunn is popping in here. Well, boy, we have a full house now. Um, I think William's going to be the king one day. I don't, even if he was only, what, about 15? Yeah. I think it's important for him to do. Well, you, you know, you're raised differently than your brother. Because yeah. you're the heir, and you're taught how to be proper. The other kid has nothing to lose by saying, fuck you. He's the spare. You know? Huh? The spare? He's the spare. I would rather be the spare than the heir. Oh, oh absolutely. yeah. You know, you get all the privileges. You get all the, you know, the nice food to eat and things like that, you know. But you don't have to. Uh... Well, let's ask... Uh... Our good friend Mike Chisholm, because the queen, the king, still rules you, doesn't he? I don't think he rules. I think he just has sort of a vested interest in some of the customs that we have up here in Canada. Well, uh, well, rule is rule is a strong, a strong word. Um, he, when when Chuck and Die came to Kelowna when I was a kid, I was a Cub Scout, and I mm -hmm. got to give her flowers. That was a big deal. Like our entire city park had tens of thousands of people there when she came it was a big 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 deal um and and the same if william were to come here there's a lot of people who would be very excited by it but i think it's just more of a symbolic it, excitement. isn't she isn't the king well the king now but the queen wasn't she on all your money too she's on a few of our bills and she still is in fact they haven't uh they haven't converted yet i might have a 20 right now that has the the queen yes i do there she is right there bam look at her look at her 
<laughs> yeah. And will, will they keep her on the money or, or do they, are they going to put Charles on? I believe Chuck is uh, coming soon. I Chuck? believe that's Chuck? <laughs> you call him Chuck? <laughs> Chuck? I get some American money too. We have Pepper Patty calling him Chuck. Yeah. yeah. I thought his name was Charlie. I think. I th <laughs> Blasphemy. Um, yeah. So I, I think, no, we don't all call him Chuck. King Chuck just has a good name ring to it. And so I've been calling him that <laughs> coronation. I just think it has a good ring to it. Maybe that shows uh, right there how uh, well, Canadians feel Rooting. about it. <laughs> She's almighty. That sounds but like a Steve anyway, Martin and, routine. And, and and also don't you on one of your uh, on one of your coins you have a bird, right? The loon. The loon is the one dollar coin, uh, which I don't have on me. We call it a loony. And mm -hmm. on the $2, they switched the $2 bill years ago. And, and that's the tune. That's the tune. So you have to <laughs> the tune. Yeah. yeah. The tune needs a polar bear, though. What? The, 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 the toonie has a polar bear on it. The toonie. Is that what it's yeah. called? Two bucks. Yeah. Well, because we had the loony for wait, years. Wait, wait, wait. It's really $1. called a toonie because you got loony toonies. I know. Isn't that great? <laughs> I realize I that? That's why we call it that. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, why okay. their money is so colorful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at the bear. <laughs> the bear. Uh, we have a beaver on our nickel, though, because that's our national animal. <laughs> oh, really? I love that. No, I'll never get back to that. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. You know, uh, you should have a beaver on your uh, on your stamp because then it'd be fun to lick. See? Oh boy! Now Alex is having oh, fun. What do you mean? Don't give me that look, Vernon. Come on. <laughs> I did. I did put up an image of that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, yeah, I get. I wonder what happens. You know, when uh, all of a sudden now uh, the queen dies. Okay, and uh, then uh, then you got you got the new king. Got Charles. And then in England, they have to change everything. You know, I know just here last week, uh, we wound up getting a new host for our midnight show, and I had to change everything that had the old show on it, like promos and graphics and things like that. I can only imagine what goes on in a place like England where they go, whoops, we missed the coin, you know, or something like that. You know, they've got to change everything. But I, I guess the queen will be in in uh you know in, in service still for a while so you know her reign was so long you know just think of what's changed in the last what 60 years as far that as technology. so yeah. i mean yeah it's uh some I of the think, think going to be around Trump's not going to be around that long yeah yeah but um uh, anyway so uh let me see here uh, what does your t-shirt say today I'm just IT. Information. Wait, what is that? I'm just... IT, uh, information technology. I'm just <laughs> for the cash. The cash. <laughs> I see. I got one too. Really? Science doesn't, science doesn't care. Science, science yeah. doesn't care what you believe. <laughs> True. I buy that. Yeah. Wait, wait. Mandy's showing us uh -oh. her very, very merry. Very nice. So, anybody watching any good TV shows lately? We're on mute, man. By the way, huh? Mandy, saw that new. I'm watching watch Murder it. at the End of the World. I love it. Oh, we saw That's... that. Okay, what's the name of it again? A Murder at the End of the World. A Murder at the End of the World. We just yeah. watched another. I just thought it was at the end of the world. No, no, no. That's another thing we were watching. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're, uh, the thing you're on Netflix, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. That's different than what he's saying. Yeah. Oh. This is on Hulu. And no, it doesn't have Julia Roberts in it. I know. This was a thing. I started started to watch it, but it didn't grab me. But maybe it will. I'm going to go back and try some more of it. Grab me. What was the name of that thing we watched? At the end of the world? No, it's not at the end of the world. Let me go up here to Netflix. Towards the end of the world? Netflix, Netflix. Hold on a second. I'm going to go to Netflix. Very strange. Okay, here we go. Yeah, my show is on Hulu. Oops. Oops. 
Oh, that's that's terrible. Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, have it's called leave the world behind like that. Let me turn this. Leave yeah, the, the world, world behind. You got it. Yeah, all. Leave let the me, world behind. Let me turn the sound off here. Okay, now I'm trying to. He got it already. Oh, leave the world behind. It. Like duh. Where have you been? <laughs> Did they say it? Did somebody say I, it? Yeah. 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 I was busy looking. Okay. <laughs> leave the world behind, and it's the strangest. Very strange. Anybody watch it? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. What did you think? I, it was all right until about three quarters of the way through, and then it got dumb. It got and, dumb? Well, every, all these shows assume that if something goes bad in the world, we're all going to go after each other. And history basically shows the opposite. So, yeah. How do you ask history? Well, actually, <laughs> what this did is it didn't, it had an ending, but it didn't have an ending. It, it did. It was a dumb ending. What, why you consider it a dumb ending? Oh, I don't, want to, I don't want to ruin it for others. It just it was they were trying to be artsy instead of definitive. But you could tell what they were. I saying. don't think they were being artsy. What I think they oh, were good. doing is they were leaving the end, the real end, to your imagination. <laughs> you know. Do you know that it, that it was produced by Michelle and Barack Obama? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, oh, I really have to watch it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's very strange, very strange, incredibly strange. Uh, <laughs> it's the only movie in which people get attacked by Teslas. <laughs> but I, I won't explain it, but it made sense, didn't it, Andrew, about the Teslas? Yeah, that part of it did, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it isn't that the movie didn't make sense. It was I don't I don't want to ruin it for Charlie who's gonna I almost it. think that it, part of it was was created by one of the writers who didn't like Elon Musk. Hmm. You know yeah, and wanted to say Teslas can be deadly. Hmm. But anyway, so that that's what we've been watching. I've been watching Bosch Legacy. It's good. what? Oh. Bosch Legacy. Oh Bosch. Yeah, everybody likes Bosch. I watched, I think, the first season, and then I just didn't go back for the rest of them. And now there have been so many of them that in order for me to watch the current one, I probably should go back and watch the others, right? But well, in some cases, sets. there's two, two different sets. And one, of, and they're all based on Michael Connolly novels, which mm -hmm. I've, read, I've read all of Michael Connolly's novels about Bosch. So <laughs> that. Yeah, is each season a different yeah. book? Sometimes, like like Bosch Legacy season two, actually goes into yep. two different books. The first three episodes is about one story, and the last uh, seven are about a different one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so the last seven are just yep. one book. The last seven episodes, yeah. Oh, the last seven episodes. Okay. okay. Of of Legacy season two. Yeah. Yeah. And and it and it's strange because I, I thought it was the case and I went back and looked at the book that it was based on. The book was called The Crossing. And it was about when Bosch was retired from the police force and he actually started helping a defense attorney, which was the exact opposite of what he had done when he was a cop. He would actually fight against defense attorneys. Yeah. He was out of prosecutors. And but in the in the TV series they use uh uh honey. What was her last name? Honey Campbell, I think, is the attorney that he's working with. But in the book, it was his brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so we have a recommendation there. But yep. I kind of like that Julie Roberts thing. I, I, I kind of disagree with you, Andrew. I think it was better than that. I think it, it was, was just weird. It was very weird. So yeah. am I, but my kind of show. Hey, I don't want it. <laughs> And let me see here. What else? Uh, what else was on that we? Oh, we were watching the two first two episodes of the uh, Cary Grant thing, Archie. <laughs> oh, is that you good? Know, I don't want to see it. No. Well, uh, the thing is, you really. Why do it? I mean, you can't. The, I don't care what actor you get. No one's going to look like Cary Grant. Nobody's going to look like Cary Grant. <laughs> And this okay. guy certainly doesn't. Because Cary Grant, well, uh, my old line about Cary Grant was, 
He probably looked better two days dead than we look right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, the guy was the most he was handsome. gorgeous guy in the world. And I'm yeah. straight, okay? He wasn't, but I'm straight. Uh, but I mean, what? A... And But to get somebody to play him, so what you have to do is after a while, you have to kind of buy into it. You have to suspend. His voice sounds like it. His voice is good, but you know, I I just I think it's unfair to hand a actor the job to do an impression, and then to act on that impression because nobody's going to think you're the real thing. So why are you trying? Well, especially this guy that they got. Well, this guy. It's not good looking at all. Doesn't even if, come if you if you wince a little bit and watch it, he looks <laughs> like him. Yeah. <laughs> But, by the you way, bring Alex, up a very good topic of conversation there, Alex. Uh, it's like you've done this before, um, I, because I, I, I think all of us probably disagreed with what you just said there. And I'm curious what people, obviously all of us can come up with somebody who we think has done a good imperson, impersonation of somebody over the years. Yeah. I'm curious what everybody's favorite is. I'm thinking uh, 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 Christian Bale as Dick Cheney was pretty good. Um, that was a pretty good... Uh, you know, impersonation. Are there any others out there that people think they did do a good job impersonating? I thought Robbie Malik for Freddie Mercury was good. Yeah, there you go. Very good. Jim Carrey's Andy Kaufman was pretty good too. Oddly enough, whoever in the late shift played David Letterman did a pretty good job. Uh, uh, three names. Uh, not Neil Patrick Harris. No, not Neil no, Patrick no, no, Harris. no, 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 no. <laughs> Michael Patrick King. No, yes. No, you know the other show, Alex, that's really good right now is Fargo, the new season. Oh, Fargo, Fargo, yeah, I'm watching that too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's nothing like show. John Hamm with nipple rings. <laughs> that's right. He, he explained how they did that. Fake they, nipples. They, they, of course, he didn't pierce his nipples, but they built fake nipples with the ring in them and then put them on oh. his real nipples, and that's how they did it. Has anybody seen the new Fargo? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Especially that woman. She's really kicks ass. She does. She's awesome. Ted, Ted Lasso's uh, friend. What? Ted. She was on Ted Lasso. Oh. Uh, John The Am? woman who's playing the, the badass. Oh, okay. Yeah, was she, she was, a big part on... She's a major character on Ted Lasso. Really? Her father is Julian Temple, the, the guy who, the producer. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I think her name is Juno Temple, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah her father okay. is Julian Temple. All right. But, you know, I mean, I never watched Ted Lasso. I've seen one episode and it just didn't appeal to me. Is there a reason I should like Ted Lasso? I'm not watching it with you. <clears throat> I've never seen it, so I don't know. You're I didn't great. like it. It's oh, entertaining. Mark. It's not great. Okay. It's a little too happy for most episode people. And I can't even get through the first episode. <laughs> me either. You, Same thing Thank with me. You. Same thing with me. I mean, I you know, I feel bad because everybody says, oh, Ted Lasso's terrific. Yeah. And I'm going, well, what I saw, there was nothing terrific about it. You know, you to watch the first, what, part another, of it, half of it. The other one worth watching is that... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Bass Reeves on uh... Bass Reeves is very oh, good. That's very good. good. Yeah, really good story, and it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's a very good show, um, and it's I think it has, its last episode was last night. No, maybe next week. Next week. Next week. What else are we watching? watching? We're watching a lot of stuff. Yeah, too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should go out more often. <laughs> Not till my back is taken care of. Yeah, she got a bad back. Yeah, well, some of us watch football. What's well, well, some of us like football. Marjorie likes football. I do. I came from a football high school. Yeah. That was a good but, game. But, but, the, but the but the but the football. Some some people see it as like. It's going really downhill now, and some like it's really inspiring. So it, it's it's yeah, it's a toss up. Not a time for me to get into football, huh? Yeah, no, and that's really bad. 
really bad. <laughs> I like the ten so million dollar guy. <laughs> Seven hundred million dollar guy. Oh, the baseball guy. Yeah. yeah oh, four, that's, the that's another million. Thing. Well, that's another sort. Hey, come on, that's over five years. Okay. Ten years. Yeah, ten but years. yeah, but se years? Se seventy million, seventy million, and that's that's more than like eight or nine total baseball salaries. Oh. The whole oh, team. Yeah. Total apparently, team. apparently, hot dogs are going to be one hundred and seventy-two fifty next. Year. <laughs> 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 well, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I I watched some stuff, but I know nobody's interested in that. But there was one that 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 uh, I mean, I know Charlie's from Chicago. There's one I, I'm watching. It's called Hip House, and it's about when hip hop started and house music started. Uh, there's a big, there's a big, you know, bunch of groups that actually started this hip, like house music with hip hop rapping over it. Yeah, and it really big, big scene in Chicago is where a lot of that started. So they interviewed a lot of really legendary uh, house music DJs coming out of Chicago. So Brian, what is pretty this interesting. On? I'm writing this down right now. What is this on? uh oh geez i i series it and it popped up okay i'll find um, it thank you I, yeah, I, it was on X, it was on xfinity it's called something about dna and it says a uh, hip house and yeah they talk about chicago djs and like clubs and the big scene there of house music it's really really cool all that happened after i left though yeah what when what year did you leave charlie 1974 oh uh, yeah that yeah well, I, you know something, uh, it's interesting, but uh, the um, all these different, you know, these uh, online services, all these things like Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus, there are so many of them now <laughs> that I am i can't remember what's on what anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Marjorie goes, what channel is that on? And we got to think of it. We go to about five different channels before we find it. And, they're not called channels anymore. They're called streaming. streaming. Well, they call it the streaming <laughs> services. Yeah. Just when you had to get a new computer and, and connect to all those up again. Boy, that was a pain in the butt. Uh, hmm. I'm about to cancel Paramount Plus because Paramount Plus streaming sucks. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Alex we're likes watching it. Frasier. Candy and I are watching Frasier and we're really yeah. enjoying it. Well, you see, Charlie, you wouldn't have that problem if the device that you were watching it on was like a Roku or a Apple TV, because uh -huh. that thing always has that stuff. Once you put it in there, it's always in there. So when yeah. you change TV sets, you just hook your TV set up to that, and that's what you pick it up on. But you probably tried to put it through your new TV set, right? Well, my new PC. Yeah. Yeah, so... I, 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 every one of them was like a pain in the butt. I had to call customer service to get them to hook it up right, so I can. I oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah but you see, if you, had, if you got a Roku and they only run, hell, you can get a Roku as cheaply as uh, like thirty nine bucks or something like that. And if you hook that up and you finally program all those things in there, uh, you really are set because you get another TV set. Or you move the TV set to another room. You simply move the Roku yeah. device. So, I have a suggestion. Even yeah. though it's very, if anybody is like baseball enthusiast, I just watched one last night. But it's old. It's been out forever because I just realized it's old. But it's did anybody see the one called the Battered Bastards of Baseball? The what? Documentary. <laughs> I heard about that. Oh, it's a movie. Okay, it's a first movie? of all, I didn't even know Kurt Russell. His father was on TV. His name was Bing Russell. Wow. Alex, you probably knew that, right? No, I didn't know that. Bing Russell oh, was like yeah, an actor. Cool. He was like, Kurt Russell's dad was like an actor. He was like on Bonanza and other stuff. I've never heard of Bing Russell. Amazing. Mm, yeah. But he apparently owned a single A baseball team that was in. Portland. It was called the Portland Mavericks back in the yeah. 70s. Yeah. Every this is when all the independent teams got eaten up by all the professional uh organizations. And there was only he was the only one that was independently owned. I don't know. I'm not a big baseball person, but I was watching this documentary and it was actually really interesting. 
Wow. Yeah, I heard it was really good. Uh, if, if anybody's like a baseball fan, when you're, like when you're it. talking like about it. people who buy teams and stuff, uh, weren't there a couple of Americans who bought a soccer team in England? And I'm trying to remember. Ryan who Reynolds. Was. Ryan Reynolds did. Who? Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Bra bought a, bought a team say again. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yes, that's what, that's exactly who I'm thinking of. Do you uh, do you do you watch soccer up there, Mike Chisholm, in Canada? No, I think it's it's probably about as popular up here as it is down there. Hockey really? is religious. I would have thought it would have been popular in in Canada. It, yeah, I mean it is, but I think it's it's also popular in the states to a point. Yeah. Uh, you know, no hockey like American football is is way way like it's way more popular up here than than, than soccer is. But hockey is hockey is really hockey hockey is big. Yeah, it's, 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 well, you know what bothers me about I gotta tell you what bothers me, a couple of things bother me about everything bothers me about football. Um, <laughs> it's um it's to begin with, it's an extremely violent game. And people go to these games, it's almost kind of like you know, you ever see those movies about like hunger games or something like that? I mean, really, it's on that level. You, you, everybody goes to a football game to see somebody break an ankle or tear, tear an ACL or whatever. Or soccer or hockey or baseball. I mean, they're all. Well, no, baseball is a very, very, is not a, is not a uh, aggressive sport. It is not. It's a very passive sport. Uh, and uh, it involves running, pitching, hitting, but you don't pounce and on and anybody. Catching and catching. And kissing, did you say? Catching. Oh, catching. But it doesn't have, you know, there's there's no uh, violence involved in it. You know. If baseball had more kissing, I'd watch. <laughs> <laughs> there's no kissing in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's kissing in baseball. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Hockey wow. actually has, like, I still am so blown away with the fact that our sport still legitimately has fighting in it. And you yeah. get penalties for fighting, and they fight on the ice every game. And oh, I mean, totally hockey, hockey, yeah. they sometimes <laughs> decimated each other, and they're not even playing the game. <laughs> you got you to gotta watch the show Shorzy on Hulu. Well, you know, it, it, years ago, I remember hockey wasn't really looked on with great respect because – of all these fights that would break out, you know, <laughs> and uh, they since have kind of stopped that, right? I mean, it's that's mi been minimized. Uh, the game has mm -hmm. the game has ebbs and flows. So, like, if you look at the late seventies, mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Flyers, who were kind of the big, they called them the Broad Street Bullies. That team was all about fighting, but then. In the early '80s, you had a team that showed up that was all finesse. And they didn't fight at all, and they kicked. The, you know, mm -hmm. they they destroyed those teams on the scoreboard. So the game has ebbs and flows of when the game is violent, or or, or more or less when it comes to focus on hitting and fighting and all that. Well, can I just mention something here because I just saw something? Um, Amy was using that chair marvelously you you literally slid from one end of the room to the other on that chair didn't you mandy you said amy you oh, keep saying amy. amy yeah you said amy yeah yes amy, amy on alex <laughs> i've been doing i've been doing all these spots for amy um oh and they look good i like them manual yeah well i also turning it you know what i did gotta tell you this this is great, this is I'm, great trying to, I'm trying to write spots for this new show, right? And it's just like I haven't written in quite a while, and it's really I I I I just don't write like I used to. So I decided screw it. So I went over to Chat GDP, yeah, and I had it write me a spot. And after it was finished, I looked at it and I went, "This is better than anything I could write." <laughs> So one of the spots you're going to hear for this new show on GabNet is going to be written Chat. by Chat GDP Chat. or GPT or whatever. GPT. GPT. GPT, yeah. 
Yeah. Just, it, I looked at it and I went, why didn't I think of that? You yeah. know, I mean, it almost, the thing that I'd found at least before it wasn't able to do was kind of give it a little sense of humor or a sense of something. And now it's, now it can, I mean, it's amazing. That's what oh. the writer's strike was all about. Well, it's yeah. put me out of work. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what the writer's strike was all about. You know, and I don't think, look, I don't think that it could write a script as good as a human being if you've got a good script writer, you know? Yeah, but it can do it fast, and then all you have to do is edit. Well, I did have to edit a little bit, you know, but, yeah, you know, it's a great template to go by, you know, so. Uh, and, just, and, and I've been also using AI when I did graphics for this show. Uh, I had to take the background out. And before, when you would take a background out using something like Photoshop, it would it would take some of it out, but it wasn't exactly perfect. With AI, you just say remove background, and it knows exactly what you want to cut out. And it's it's incredible, and it's a clean cut too. It's not like it doesn't look sloppy. All right, I mean it's amazing, it's just amazing. So I'm not complaining about AI. Yeah, the world is becoming a very weird place. <laughs> Well, I think I think AI for creative situations can help, but it can only help in the things that are technical, I think. You know, removing a background in artwork, for instance. You know, like, okay, but what about like if um if somebody wanted to create Alex Bennett interviewing Ronald Reagan and they got the footage from everybody and they got it in there and they threw it in the machine and suddenly a 20 minute interview shows up with you interviewing Ronald Reagan. How do you feel about that? Well, I wouldn't mind it. You know, you're not getting paid closest as I've come to working. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you're not getting paid for it though. If I use your, your image and I don't pay you, you like that? Well, that's another problem altogether. But the fact is that I don't think they could do that and accurately create my uh my interviewing technique it's pretty damn close i've seen they kind of can it's it's it's, it's i ridiculous. don't know I, they can probably get my face they can get my some of my mannerisms things like that but i don't think they can they can you know i i in an interview i'd be asking certain questions and I always kind of go outside the box to get a to make up a question, um, and uh, I don't think they could do that with with AI. What Not about Mike Chism? What about Mike Chism interviewing David Letterman? It's coming. <laughs> don't, I've already, I've already, I'm already down that path. Significantly. Uh, AI, you could do joke. that. You don't have to think about it. AI is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down that path already. It's something that's going to come out as a, as a complete joke. Um, yeah, yeah, what, for you, sure. you, you're gonna do it as a Letterman. joke. Oh, well, I'd be, I'll be completely above board saying it's fake, all this sort of stuff, absolutely, including me. I'll be fake in it as well. Um, it won't be really me doing it. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah, down that path already, Brian, for sure. <laughs> when Ryan Reynolds did the, did the, uh, on the Strike Force Five podcast with the five late night toasts and Ryan Reynolds, and they were they were messing around with AI, doing AI of each other, mm -hmm. uh, making commercials. It was it was unbelievable how it was spooky how accurate they got with that and how fast they can do it. How fast they can do it too. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, I was amazed at how fast it wrote these spots. Yeah, I, mean, I just I clicked enter, and about a second later started coming up on the screen you yeah. give it enough of your image and your inflection and your voice and whatnot in a very short period of time well, it's they're you actually doing the spot uh chat gpt gdp or whatever <laughs> gpt G gd what gpt 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 yeah gpt yep yeah okay uh that means gross national product doesn't it no <laughs> Um, I think you can go on there and do some stuff with video. Am I right about that, Andrew? Do you know about that? They, they have different. There's the chat GPT that's text and they have one that's uh, still photos. I did just this week. 
for the or last week for the heck of it. I needed an image of two businessmen shaking hands and they mm -hmm. got the image wrong. So they were shaking left hand to right hand in front of it. It was like they were about to dance. <laughs> and I, I used it because I thought it would get people's attention and it sure did. Everyone was commenting <laughs> on the creepy picture of the two guys holding hands. I know I did ask uh, chat GPT or whatever to... Um, um, I used to, years ago, I had an idea for a comedy club. I want to open up a comedy club. And I'd come up with a name for it. And the name of it was The Exploding Hamster. Uh, and it was going to be, I was going to have a neon light outside with like an animation of, a, of an exploding hamster. And it all, you know, it, uh, it all comes from an old joke about how do you, uh, prevent a hamster from exploding when you have sex with it <laughs> okay. and the answer was gaffer's tape <laughs> you know so I, I i figured ah well that's what i'll do i'll do uh do exploding hamster right so the other day I was, a couple of weeks ago i was playing around with with chat gpt or tpi or mtv or whatever <laughs> and and i um um, um and put in a, a artwork for an exploding hamster and it gave me about five different pictures of an exploding hamster <laughs> you know one of which i loved because it, it was like exploding with the hamster having a terribly pained look on his face <laughs> that's a good name for a comedy club and huh? i don't do art i can't draw worth a damn so uh, that would be perfect for me if i needed it for something you know and it's original, so it's not copywritten, whatever. As all the artists of the world have tears running down their face to hear you say that. Well, I know they do, but I can't afford to hire them, okay? No, and no. the world moves on. Like, like that's It's just really no. weird to see some of these professions that are now becoming obsolete. Like, it's just the last time? You know, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, let's talk about things that go obsolete, okay? You know what's obsolete right now? Movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll never, almost never see movie movies. Movie theaters, movie theaters. Well, no, forget about movies, theaters, movies. You know, I mean, what are you getting today in movies? You know, you're getting cartoons Mar that are being made into movies. Yeah. Uh, Comic books. Yeah. Let me show you something. I just asked the, the graphics program to draw me. Let me move over so you can see it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 a, a donald duck as donald trump yeah yeah I, I tried donald trump it wouldn't do trump so i said donald duck with a bad toupee and a red tie well you could have just probably typed in donald duck trump this is this is what it uh wow this is what it made it just now screwing around there isn't one person that wouldn't know what that is yeah right. <laughs> i know wait it gave me yeah, a, but gave all me i'm saying one. is that there are things that go extinct. And I think that when I was thinking about it the other day, you know, the, the movies today, you go to, what movies do they make? They make stuff based on comic books. They don't, they really, it, if, they may, if they're going to make a movie Here's that the says something or does something, they really have to do it for Netflix or ne Netflix, yeah. or one of those <laughs> things where they can get the money to do a small movie. But... Small about, movies, you can put that in a movie theater? No, you can't. Think about how big Kodak was in the 70s and 60s and 80s. It's gone, yep. completely gone. Kodak and used to make businesses films. built and, around Kodak, like photo mats and things right, like that. Yeah, they're right. paper and they're using, yeah. Well, the thing was that what happened with, uh, with uh, Kodak is they never really realized what was happening in the world. Yep. And they had simply move their business over into making uh, uh, all things that would have to do with digital, they yeah. still be in business today. They still be yeah. a major name, but they don't, they didn't. So now they're making like, you know, gift bags for people who want to have a Kodak logo on it or something. But the that's National cash it. register. National cash NCR. register. NCR, yeah, yeah, absolutely. NCR, Great. gone, yes. Cash registers completely gone. Mm. Typewriters. And the trouble is that these companies didn't get into the business. Who do we lose there? 
Oh, oh. Gain Jeffrey. Well, we had Gain Jeffrey, but we Brian's were... gone. Brian. Brian. Oh, Brian. Oh, Brian. yeah. Okay. He's big on the dog. He's probably, probably going to his other. Here we mm. go. I bet he was going to his other computer. Uh, I bet you. Oh, he's back oh, yeah. in the car again. There he is. Yeah, he stopped to use the bathroom, and now he's back on the road. <laughs> <laughs> How about nickels and dimes? Yeah. <laughs> Thank uh, you for the mute. Coins. But, you yeah. know, I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of companies are, are, are completely gone. Yeah. I didn't even stop to think about cash registers. When's the last time you saw wow. it? You know, everybody. It's happened that... perverse, too, though. I love the joke this last week. I've been having such a ball with it. Um, Netflix opening up brick and mortar stores. Mm -hmm. and yeah. All the all the blockbuster jokes that are out there right now. Because mm -hmm. Netflix put them out of business and now they're opening up brick and mortar stores. Why well, open up a brick and mortar store? What's, yeah, the, is. what's the advantage in that? You know, they went to the model they have now because they didn't want to be have to mail out. Yeah, they don't even mail out. I mean, initially, initially, Netflix started. Well, they started as you know, you would they would mail you a DVD and then you'd mail one back. When mm -hmm. they got one back, they mail you the new one. Yeah. Uh, but then it was a pretty good model. But then one day they decided, what if we take these films and people don't have to do that? I, I see you there, uh, Charlene. I'll, well, I was just going to say, my daughter-in-law worked for Netflix for 11 years. And uh, October 31st was her last day because she worked for the DVD side. And they totally, that's totally gone now. And wow. all, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, customer services overseas now. I think it's wow. the Is that Los Gatos? No, it was they were in Fremont, it oh, way okay. out Fremont, almost to um, almost to Milpitas. Yeah, because they had their headquarters. They were, yeah, yeah, it was a great company that she worked for. They gave her money, I mean bonuses and gifts in the mail all the time and all kinds of stuff, and it's all gone now. Wow, wow, that's uh, that's something. Uh, but I mean, they, 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 again, they went out of that business and mm -hmm. one, they're suddenly thinking about going brick and mortar. But anyway, what they, 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 they decided Sears and Roebuck just reopened two stores in California. <laughs> really? What? What? I saw there, an article that Sears Roebuck reopened two of their <laughs> their stores in California. Sears and Roebuck? See, well, Sears. It's not Roebuck. <laughs> what happened was, what mm -hmm. happened was, is that at one point, Netflix decided, well, we're mailing these things out. What if we were to put these things online so people could download them online? And that's how that whole thing started of you being able to watch movies from Netflix on a Netflix channel like that. You know that Netflix just stopped sending them out in the last couple of months. There was actually still a few people getting the DVDs. Oh, there were a lot of them. Really? A lot of people were. Yeah, I was one of them. They let me they let me keep the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They told everybody, if you got one, keep it. We don't want to get it back. We don't want yeah. to pay for it coming yeah. back, and we don't want to have to store it here because we're just wow. going to throw it. Red, Redbox is still making money. Yeah, yeah Redbox sure with their DVD. So that's yeah. how how that yeah. business changed. Uh, and but you see, there was a a, a business that saw the future and went for it. Mm -hmm. And what so they didn't just, become obsolete. What about just CDs in general? I mean, in our lifetime, we went from vinyl to these things, and now these are garbage. They're they're coasters. You know, every, everything's online now. I mean, I got hundreds of, of CDs. <laughs> looking right, back right at right me, folks, -tracks. looking back at me, all the money I wasted on DVDs over the years. Right. Well, yep. And you and, watch? Do you ever watch any of but, those? Oh yeah, I watch. Yeah. Them. Yeah, right. in the day, you know. Then it's not a waste. Then it's not Back a waste. when. Then I started. Uh, then, I, then I started uh, dubbing them off, so I have them on files here, uh, and right. then I have them on a big raid, uh, which is a uh, holds a lot of uh, mm -hmm. a lot of space, and I have all the movies I have had in here, but I only there's some blank spaces in here. I still haven't done most of them. Because wow. every time you try to make a copy of them, it, if it's a two-hour movie, it takes you two hours to dub it off. That's silly. You know, 
So there's no real fast way of doing it, but you know, it, it uh, certainly I am burdened down by these. And I didn't throw the ones away that I made into a file. I put them in a closet here. Everybody wants well, DVDs. Many DVDs. closets. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> what? Some, many some closets. Many, many, right. many I, closets. I gotta go. I gotta go pick up my granddaughter. Peace and love, guys. I love you guys. Peace and love. Bye. 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 But but some people some people on this panel uh, have to have VCS v, VCA, uh, VHSs to watch their their football <laughs> team, their Super Bowl. Uh, wait, wait, excuse me. <laughs> Don't laugh. I have all the Cowboys Super Bowls on VHS tape. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you have to. How are you going to watch them? Brian <laughs> and Charlie have this relationship these guys, going. Hey, Ale Alex, these guys ping me all through the game. <laughs> Early and Tony, and then I'm getting it from Kevin. Tony doesn't even like any of these teams, and he keeps. Every 10 minutes, they're saying, oh, fumble. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Adrian, he's texting you. I said, no, it's not somebody. Well, <laughs> it's good for both of you because you feel you're watching it with somebody else. Yeah. There you go. Like, in your family, Brian, no. is your family but into football? No, you know, I see that because I've gotten Adrian into football and then she has to deal with all these 49er fans. And then again, today, she's got to deal with all of them. So, yeah, we're going to get it back. Then. Well, she, I... she didn't understand the, you know, she said, Daddy, but we were so confident they were going to win. I said, yeah, that's, that's sports. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of ridiculous in that, in that fashion, in that I don't... Uh, uh, I, I don't, you don't like sports, huh? You don't like sports. No, it's not that I don't like sports. I do like. Uh, I I will say I do like uh, uh, basketball. You know. When was the last time you watched a basketball uh, game? Uh, not basketball, rather. I mean baseball. When mm -hmm. was the last time you watched a baseball game? Um. Duh. Oh, 19, I Hank, Hank Aaron was playing. <laughs> 19, what? 1995, maybe? Maybe. You know, I like baseball from this standpoint. If you said to me tomorrow, Marjorie, let's go to a baseball game, I'd say, lovely, I'll go. Because I, I love sitting in a park. It's so pastoral. You yeah, know? $18 beer, a $40 hot dog. Well, that, that's the downside of it. But when yeah. I used to go to them, they were a nickel. Anyway, oh my god, <laughs> what a dime for this hot dog! Are you kidding me? <laughs> my, dad, when my dad lived in New York, they went to Nathan's, and the hot dogs literally were a nickel. And you think oh, about that, who was making any money? And they, <laughs> they were good, I don't think they've ever been a nickel in my time. Well, Nathan's he, were great, I mean, in my, in my experience in New York, but it certainly was somewhere like around 25 cents or something like that. Yeah. You know, what are they now? Oh, they got to be six, eight bucks, right? I don't yeah. know. For for one hot dog at Nathan? Oh, I'm sure. I'm going to look it up. Hold on. Yeah. Nathan's hot dog price. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how much they charge at those little stands where they have the hot dogs swimming around in swamp water. <laughs> right. Yeah. Proper terminology is street. He's, he's looking up the price of hot dogs at Nathan's. Yes. <laughs> By the way, Nathan's a great hot dog. It is. Yeah, because it had a casing on it, had that that crunch when you bit into it. Okay, it, so it's they're four seventy four. Oh, that's yeah. good. boy! But so if you well, want to, handle them, it with tax, it's five dollars. Sure. It ain't four seventy four at the ballpark, though. No, no, it is not. <laughs> this is at Coney Island the Subway and go out at to Coney Island. Island. And this go to and go to Nathan's. And oh, wait a minute, this was April 2021, so who knows how old and what they are now? No, it's just... yeah, but they didn't, didn't Lori, didn't you and Lori Thompson go to like Nathan's or something and she ordered? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, here's the thing <laughs> Nathan's, you go to Nathan's to get what? Tell me, hot first. dogs, <laughs> hot dogs, and secondarily, what do you go for? So, no, the French oh, fries, fries. fries. Oh. Okay, because they make some great fries. Mm. Uh, we go to the Nathan's in Manhattan, 
which is not like going out to the one in Coney Island because then all they serve is like the hot dogs and the, and the fries and the sauerkraut. So I don't think you can even get sauerkraut out in the Coney Island. Yeah. <laughs> well, we go to the one here in Manhattan and we go in and I say, this place has the best hot dogs you've ever had. And we go in and what does she order? A pizza. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> Next time I talk to her, because I'm, I'm doing an interview with her in a couple of weeks, I'm going to mention that to her. I, I, <laughs> I specifically remember, okay, that she ordered a pizza. And you, yeah, they do make a pizza at the one here in Manhattan. But, it, you know, why? You know, that's kind of like buying candy out of a vending machine in the subway. You know, you just don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. I found I found the pricing. It's five forty nine for the hot dog, five ninety nine with sauerkraut. With Three, sauerkraut, with sauerkraut, five ninety nine. They can yeah. charge you an extra dollar for sauerkraut. No, it's uh, fifty cents. Fifty cents. Chili mm -hmm. cheese dog, six ninety nine. <clears throat> Damn, because usually but, I would get a I would get a, a chili cheese dog, and then I get the regular dog. Yeah. But I mean, man, that's a lot of money for one. Well, you see. A girlfriend I used to know. Which one? Went with you. Ah. What? Nothing. Centuries <laughs> ago. Uh, her father made the hot dogs for Nathan's. I mean, they 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 made it. Uh, he made it for. Oh. Them. It was a special kind of hot dog, and it had a nice crunch to it. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it it the juice would spit out sometimes when you bit into it too. So. That was the best hot dog. I don't think there were better hot dogs in America at the time. Um, now there, there's a few like Boar's Head, I, we think has some pretty good hot dogs, you know, but there's nothing like uh, like Nathan's. So, And then they stopped selling. They seem to stop selling the ones with skin on them in stores. They're all uh, skinless. Who wants a skinless hot dog? That's not <laughs> fun. Right, uh, 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 Mr. Bur Burger. That's right. Right. <laughs> That's a guy. I, if I had to do a commercial for hot dogs, I would hire him to do that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe I should make you the voice of a gabnet. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. You should have him do some of those promos just one time. Yeah. <laughs> Just say, talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, talk like you've never heard it before. <laughs> you got to get more of your rasp in there. Talk like you've never heard it before. There How's we that? go. That. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do before you retired, Ed? Uh, oh, I, I worked for the city. Uh, yeah, doing what? <laughs> for the park. Answering park. phones. No, no, no. no, they get me away from the phones. <laughs> they hired him to slow the lines at the DMV. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this group. <laughs> group. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, that's why I love doing this show. It's lovely people. And if we had Paula here, we'd have a complete, a full hand of it today, you know. We'll that's be here right. next week. Huh? She'll be here next week. She'll be here next week, yeah. Um, but, uh, gee, uh, you know. So, Mandy, quickly, how's She'll everything in Atlanta? Will Paula be visiting you at your apartment? Yeah? What? You're coming back up? No. She... no. Will Paula be visiting you? Or will Paula be visiting us uh, anytime she wants to? You know? Oh, anytime. She comes about once a year. Yeah. Okay. And stays with us. Uh, I'm you're, sorry. Always, you're always welcome back. You were a lovely guest to have here. Thanks. What were you asking me before that, though, before I interrupted you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Nothing. Hmm. And if it was something important, I forgot it. That's <laughs> right. And you're talking right. about my memory, Alex? <laughs> yeah. Really. He, 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 he trying to say doing how everything was going in Atlanta. Yeah. St Steve, you trying to say something? 
-mm. Well, I was just going to say, I'm sorry. I've just been busy working because I'm going on a cruise Friday. So I'm trying to where, where, where to just the Bahamas, just the Bahamas. Are you taking one of those big boats that have a Ferris wheel on them? No, it's well, it's just a regular cruise ship, but just the three night little short. Marjorie won't take a cruise. Yeah, she she just doesn't want to get on a boat with that many people. <laughs> I know. I feel like that's going to be how these this is. Well, but I think we talked about this before. It's like my first one, so I'm just taking a short one because I'm not sure how I'm going. You'll yeah. be fine. Oh, no, that's that's good. Though. Yeah. It's nice. We we we're going to start taking some cruises, whether she likes it or not. You know. <laughs> He's fun. You know, I I I've got to make sure it's a kind of boat that she would feel comfortable on. Otherwise, I'm going to hear it for a solid seven days. Yeah. Oh, this is no good. That's yeah. no good, you know. Stay away from carnival and that kind of stuff. You yeah, I just don't want any, I don't Absolutely. want any shit for entertainment. It's not does. even on the list, Lynn. Good, good, good. <laughs> Royal Caribbean's okay. NCL's great. Princess is great. It'll be fine. Yeah, but I don't want any, any, any that do like entertainment. I don't want to, I don't want a ship that says, you know, we're doing Oklahoma. What? Yeah, <laughs> no, let me tell you. They they were, no, on this one is Mamma Mia, and it's our like I went to go get the tickets and I sold out. What? What? Dad, I want to they're doing Mamma Mia. Kill me, David. Kill me. <laughs> Mandy, as soon as you get on the ship, go down to the concierge and ask for tickets. You'll get tickets. My problem is I'm married to an old broad. What can I say? You know. Do you not like Mama Mia? Not on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> the shows were excellent. I don't, excellent. Know, I don't, I don't think I like Mama Mia anymore. And I'm, I am i do not want to insult you, Amy. I'm Amy. <laughs> and he, I've been doing these spots over and over again. I'm typing this name down, and now it's stuck in my mind. It's burned <laughs> in there. Hey, um, Mandy. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, Ma Mama Mia was never one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. the shows on the ship are great. You'll you'll have you'll enjoy. Yeah, I, I know you like it, Mama Mia because it's a, it, uh, it's it's uh, a feel good uh, show. Yeah, but I'm it's the kind weird. that would. Oh, look who's there! Look hey. who's there. He's picking her up at school. Who? Hey. <laughs> 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 You're in such trouble, Brian. <laughs> I think she's going to wind up in show business. I really, <laughs> yeah. she's such a ham. She's yeah. such a show off. <laughs> and uh, he and he and Adrian have a great relationship. Uh -huh. really. yeah. Hey, listen, good. we are running way over time here. Yes, you are. So oh, what? What's for dinner <laughs> tonight, dear? You know? <laughs> You'll find out. What do you mean? Is it it's mystery food? Is it? Yeah. I bet it's <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> is it? Okay. All right. I like leftovers. Thank yeah. you, Marjorie, for being here. I know it isn't going to be anything important for dinner because she hasn't even left the show to go start it. <laughs> or, or to answer the front door to get it. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're going to have dinner. We're going to take out a loan. Uh, yeah. Shalene, so nice having you here. Always is. Uh, and uh, uh, Len LaFrisco, you and that wallpaper. I know. It's your favorite. I'm going to send it to you. It's great wallpaper, <laughs> as opposed to the one that Tony used to have. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you so much um, uh, for being here, uh, Andrew Deutsch. Always a delight. You're always hilarious. And your backgrounds are terrific. Yeah. You want to leave us with a background at all? Pardon? You want yeah. to leave us with a background at all? There we go. <laughs> Is that better? I may yeah. rot in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Monty Python show. I'm going to have to talk to you sometime and find out how you're doing all of that. Anytime. Huh? Anytime. Okay. You know, we'll jump on a call. okay, let's do it. Happy to. And of course, um, Mandy, have a good trip. Thank yeah, you. Have fun. And yes, we want to go on a trip too, but first I got to get some money. That I'm Enough, Alex. That I'm <laughs> <laughs> Just 
Jesus Thanks to Charlie. Christ. I appreciate it, Charlie. Thanks hey. to the lovely and attractive Vernon Nunn for being here. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jeff, you haven't said a word. Well, I only got half. But I've been busy because it's my wife's birthday. Oh, Happy birthday, oh, Pam. Happy birthday, Pam. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. Hey, dear Pamela. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Happy birthday. That, that's the, that's mm -hmm. the Shiksa he's married to. That's me. birthday <laughs> last week. You can tell she's a Shiksa because look in the background what's at their house. Wait, where is it? A Christmas oh, tree. I don't know what you can't see. I don't think you could see it from here. You can see it. We can see. I know. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it looks just like a handsome tree. Bit. However, how much? Let me ask you a question quickly because things are expensive. These. How much did that tree cost you? Seventy-five bucks. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! What, you think that's a lot? God, you should buy one in New York. Am I glad yeah. I'm not a Gentile? In, in New York, they cost two, three hundred dollars. <laughs> in the same yeah. way. Oh, yeah. That's, that's deep. And of course, uh, Brian, thank you so much. And uh, thanks, Adrian, for joining us at the last minute. <laughs> I love her. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'll be back Bye. Bye. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, let me see here. Oh, hey, Steve Bender. You're right. Edward. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Goodbye. I'll see you later, folks. Uh, <laughs> what? Steve Bender hasn't even called us in the longest time. Oh, I don't remember his name. Edward Berger. That's right. Uh, That's all, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.